Yo, what's up everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving deep into a metal that sounds like it came straight out of a Marvel movie. I'm talking about Inconel. Seriously, the name alone sounds like it could armor up Iron Man's next suit or be the secret ingredient in a spaceship as whole. And you know what? That's not too far from the truth. This stuff is an absolute beast. It s a superloy that basically laughs in the face of conditions that would turn most other metals into a puddle of molten goo. So, how is this legendary material made? And where did it even come from? Stick around, because we re about to uncover the story behind the metal that can take the heat when things get seriously extreme. So, let's break it down. What exactly is Inconel? It's not just one single metal, but a whole family of nickel-based superloys. The term superloy isn't just marketing hype, it's a technical class of materials designed for insane performance. We're talking about environments like the inside of a jet engine, a nuclear reactor core, or a deep-sea chemical processing plant. These are places where temperatures can soar to thousands of degrees, and corrosive chemicals are constantly trying to eat everything in sight, your standard steel. It would be toast, literally. According to a 2021 article in Nature Reviews, these superloys are engineered specifically for high-temperature structural applications, where mechanical strength and resistance to degradation are non-negotiable. To really get the origin story, we have to rewind the clock to the 1940s. The world was in the midst of massive technological upheaval. The aerospace industry was just taking off, and the dawn of the nuclear age was upon us. Engineers and scientists were pushing the boundaries of what was possible, but they kept hitting a wall of material wall. They needed metals that could withstand unprecedented levels of heat and stress without failing. The jet engines being developed required turbine blades that could spin at insane speeds while being blasted by superheated gases. Nuclear reactors needed components that wouldn't degrade under intense radiation and thermal loads. The existing alloys just couldn't cut it. They would creep, warp, or straight up disintegrate. This is where a company called the International Nickel Company or INCO for short, stepped onto the scene. They were the OGs, the original creators of INCONEL. They saw this critical need and got to work experimenting with new alloy compositions. Their big breakthrough was realizing that a super high concentration of nickel was the key. But nay, it was a game changer, providing the material solution that enabled some of the 20th century's most incredible technological leaps. Without it, modern air travel and power generation would look very, very different. So what's the secret sauce? What makes Inconel so ridiculously tough? It all comes down to its unique chemical recipe. The primary ingredient, the star of the show, is nickel often, making up over 50% of the alloy. Nickel is the hero that provides that incredible resistance to high temperatures. It has a very stable crystal structure that doesn't lose its integrity when things get fiery. But it's not just nickel alone. It's a carefully crafted cocktail of elements. Chromium is another key player, typically added in significant amounts. Chromium's job is to form a passive, protective oxide layer on the surface of the metal. Think of it like a microscopic self-healing coat of armor that blocks corrosion and oxidation from getting a foothold. It's why ink canal can hang out in saltwater or acidic environments without rusting away. Then you have other heavy hitters, like molybdenum and niobium. Molybdenum is the muscle. It adds a ton of strength and toughness, especially at high temperatures, preventing the metal from becoming brittle or cracking under stress. Niobium works in a similar way, contributing to the alloy's overall strength and durability. And, of course, there's a bit of iron in the mix, which helps with the overall properties and keeps costs in check. The exact percentages of these elements vary depending on the specific Inconel grade like Inconel 625, or 718 each, one fine-tuned for a particular job. But the core philosophy is the same. Blend these elements together to create a material that's greater than the sum of its parts. Okay, so we know what's in it. But how do you actually make this stuff? The manufacturing process for Inconel is as intense as the material itself. You can't just melt it down in a backyard forge. It's a multi-stage high-tech journey that begins with what I like to call the melting party. First, you take the raw materials, the high-purity nickel, chromium, molybdenum, and all the other goodies and you dump them into a massive electric arc furnace or a vacuum induction furnace. We're talking about temperatures that can exceed 1,500 degrees Celsius or nearly 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. 
The raw metals are zapped with an insane amount of electricity, creating an arc that melts everything down into a glowing, homogeneous, molten soup. The goal here is to get a perfectly uniform liquid alloy, but just melting it isn't enough. At these temperatures, the molten metal can easily react with oxygen and nitrogen from the air, creating impurities called inclusions. These tiny imperfections can act as weak points, leading to cracks and catastrophic failure down the line. To prevent this, the next step is often vacuum induction, melting, or vim. The molten alloy is placed in a crucible inside a vacuum chamber. By sucking all the air out, you create a low-pressure environment. This process basically purges the melt, pulling out dissolved gases and other undesirable impurities. An article from ASM International in 2020 describes this as a critical step for producing clean, high-performance superalloys. It's like giving the metal a high-tech spa day to get rid of all the gunk. For the most demanding applications, like mission-critical jet engine parts, the process goes one step further with a technique called vacuum arc remelting, or VAR. It's like double purification for the absolute elite treatment. In this stage, the solidified ingot from the VIM process is used as a giant electrode. It's slowly remelted, drop by drop, inside another vacuum chamber. This second melting process gives you an incredibly refined and uniform grain structure. It ensures that the final material is free of any segregation or inconsistencies. This tight, uniform grain structure is what gives Inconel its amazing resistance to fatigue and cracking, even when it's spinning at holy crap RPMs inside a turbine. Once you have this ultra-pure, perfectly mixed alloy ingot, it's ready to be shaped. This is where forging and casting come in. The glowing hot ingot, looking like a cylinder of pure sunshine, is moved to massive hydraulic presses or hammers. Through a process called controlled deformation, the ingot is squeezed, hammered, and shaped into billets, bars, sheets, or even huge, seamless rings. This isn't just about getting the right shape. The forging process itself is crucial for strengthening the metal. The immense pressure aligns the crystal grains within the alloy, creating a dense interlocking structure that's incredibly strong and resilient. It's like a blacksmith hammering a sword, but on an epic industrial scale with millions of pounds of force. But the real magic, the step that truly unlocks Inconel's superhero powers, is the heat treatment. After forging, the shaped part isn't at its full strength yet. It needs to go through a precise series of heating and cooling cycles. This process is called precipitation hardening, or age hardening. The part is heated to a specific temperature, held there for a period, and then cooled at a controlled rate. As described in a 2022 Materials Today article, this triggers the formation of microscopic particles, known as precipitates, within the metal's crystal lattice. These tiny hard particles act like microscopic anchors, pinning the crystal structure in place and making it incredibly difficult for the atomic layers to slip past each other. Think of them as tiny bodyguards distributed throughout the metal, locking everything down and providing immense strength. This is what gives Inconel its legendary ability to maintain its integrity at mind-boggling temperatures. And that brings us to the real mic drop moment for Inconel. Its ability to perform where other metals simply fail. Most conventional alloys, including many types of steel, start to lose their strength significantly once you go above 500 or 600 degrees Celsius. They get soft, they stretch, they creep. By the time you hit 1000 degrees Celsius or over 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, they're basically mush. But in Gonel, it just stares back and says, is that all you got? It retains a huge portion of its strength even at these extreme temperatures, which is why it's the go-to material for the hottest sections of gas turbines, rocket engine nozzles, and combustion chambers. It's the material that allows us to push the limits of power and efficiency. It's not just about heat, either. Inconel's corrosion resistance is off the charts. That protective chromium oxide layer we talked about makes it a champion in harsh chemical environments. That's why you'll find it in deep ocean oil and gas rigs, where it has to withstand corrosive salt water and high pressures for decades. It is used in chemical processing plants to handle aggressive acids and in pollution control systems to deal with corrosive exhaust gases. If your operating environment is basically a supervillain trying to dissolve, corrode, or melt everything in its path, in Conel is the Batman of Metals, showing up with its nickel-chromium cape to save the day. And the story doesn't end there. Engineers and metallurgists are constantly remixing the formula, creating new versions of Inconel to meet new challenges.
you have Inconel 625, which is famous for its incredible corrosion, resistance, and weldability. Then there's Inconel 718, the workhorse of the aerospace industry, known for its exceptional strength and ease of fabrication. And then you have even more advanced versions like Inconel 738, designed for the most extreme temperatures in industrial gas turbines. Each version is like a new cheat code tailored for a specific set of demands. Whether you need ultimate corrosion resistance, the ability to be welded into complex structures, or just raw, unadulterated high-temperature muscle, so, from its origins in the 1940s as a solution for the burgeoning aerospace and nuclear industries, to its modern-day role in pushing the frontiers of energy, exploration, and manufacturing, Inconel has proven itself to be one of the most remarkable materials ever created. It's a testament to human ingenuity, the ability to look at a problem, like metal melting, and engineer a solution at the atomic level. The next time you see a plane flying overhead or think about the power that keeps your lights on, there's a good chance that somewhere, deep inside the machinery, a piece of Inconel is taking the heat, doing its job, and making it all possible. Thanks for sticking with me on this deep dive into the world of Inconel. It's truly fascinating stuff. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you do UNT miss our next adventure. Drop a comment below and let me know what other crazy materials you want me to cover. Until next time, stay curious.